Uh, let's speak to Peter Matthews, who's a professor of political science at Cypress College and the author of Dollar Democracy, joins us now from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, Peter, so margins, as Mike was just saying there, are very, very slim, aren't they? And you, while, meanwhile, we have Donald Trump saying that the uh, election is being stolen, Joe Biden saying, just hold the faith. How do you assess where we're at right now? Well, it's absolutely slim at this point, but there are many, many votes, like you said, about 30 million votes to be counted. And these states like Michigan and uh, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania are critical. And most of those votes in those states were cast through the mail or early in the ballot box in the drop-off boxes. They were the early votes, and those were overwhelmingly Democratic votes. And that's why Joe Biden is absolutely correct in saying, hold on, but also on, on principle. In the United States of America, we believe in counting every vote. Every vote has to be counted as part of a democratic tradition. And this is the first president, the first presidential candidate, uh, Mr. Trump. President Trump was saying that the election's over today. This is the election day, so it's over. Don't count the votes that came in even before the election day had come about, because we have early voting in the United States, in many states. He's saying, don't count those. You can't do that. That's unconstitutional. The U.S. Supreme Court already decided that Pennsylvania has every right to pursue its state law. According to it, it can count till Friday. And those votes are mostly going to be Democratic votes. Now, Mr. Trump could end up winning the election, but he needs to let every single vote be counted because that's the rule of law principle. Right. Uh, Peter, what do you think this says about democracy in the United States? And, and what are your concerns about how this might develop out on the streets? You know, this is a real problem because of the fact that our election system is, it is state by state, and that's how the country was founded as a federate, confederation uh, initially, and then the federation, federal system. But originally, the states were more important, they were more powerful, and they came together as independent units to form one union. And so the states had the greatest amount of power over the actual electoral process, the election itself. And states vary state by state in certain ways in terms of the details of how the votes are cast, how they're counted. And so you should let the states have the pre preponderance of say here and only, only once in a while the Supreme Court will step in if there's something that's untoward regarding federal constitutional principles in the federal constitution. But it's basically a vote counting and vote, voting itself as a state function. And it's, it's something that is, it's, it can produce disjointed results at times, it did, as it did back in 2000, there was controversy. It needs to be streamlined. The whole system needs to be streamlined, in my view. And then also the question of the Electoral College. Many people say that we don't even need an Electoral College anymore because people are informed. They can be informed through the media and they can have direct democ voting democracy of the people themselves choosing the president, as most democratic countries do in their, own, in their own right. We're still on this system of electoral college where actually, last time President Trump won a minority of the popular vote and still became president with a majority of the electoral college vote. That's not a one-person, one-vote democratic principle. So that needs to be looked at very carefully also. Yeah, and Peter, as we've been hearing, this, all this could well come down to Pennsylvania. The Supreme Court has ruled that Pennsylvania has until Friday to count all the votes. But all the while, we have three justices on the Supreme Court indicating that they, they may yet revisit that decision. Could you see a, a scenario whereby the votes are not counted in Pennsylvania? I would hope this doesn't come to place because it would be uh, delegitimize the system to in the eyes of many voters, especially the voters who cast those votes and don't get those votes counted. That's an egregious violation of democratic principles of the United States Constitution, that every person's vote has to count. In fact, we had a civil war about that when African Americans were not allowed to vote, not allowed to be citizens, and the United States had a civil war to settle that score. It took many years beyond that to finalize it. but. Now that everyone can vote formally speaking, who's eligible to vote, you've got to count every vote. And I hope the Supreme Court does not revisit this. They've already made the decision to allow the Pennsylvania rulings to stand. And I think the new court, which means you have an added member who President Trump appointed, Judge or Justice Amy Comey, Comey Barrett, that's clearly a system, a situation where he's getting a personal advantage by someone that he personally appointed. So I think the court that was in place when the election took place should be the court ruling that stands. And that was the court ruling that said, let Pennsylvania votes be counted. And so I don't think that President Trump should have tried to appeal this. I'm not even sure he has the legal standing to appeal it himself. He may have to go through the state courts and through the states themselves as it becomes a controversy. But the president should really leave this alone and let democracy work. So he can feel like he really won this election, that he didn't just take it. Yes, uh, so many twists and turns to go yet in this election story. Peter Matthews, for the time being, thanks very much. Do appreciate that.